Hello and welcome to Miss Hannah Loves Grammar. In this video we'll be concentrating on the poem Mother Any Distance by Simon Armitage. A fun fact about Armitage is that he studied geography at university and actually went on to be a probation officer. This particular poem comes from a collection called A Book of Matches and actually this whole anthology was designed to explore what it would be like to read a poem that took as long to read as a match took to burn out. Armitage wanted to write poetry that concentrated on a moment in our lives that was brief, but could never be easily forgotten. The poems share his own personal experiences and explore new ideas. But let's consider the poem's title, Mother Any Distance. Like all poems in this collection, it just refers to the opening line of the poem. But the title points out that the poem will dwell on the mother-son relationship. Why is there distance between them is the central question in this poem. We want to know, is it just physical distance? Like separation? Or is it emotional distance between them too? Mother, any distance greater than a single span requires a second pair of hands. You come to help me measure windows, pelmets, doors, the acres of the walls, the priories of the floors. You at the zero end, me with the spool of tape, recording length, reporting metres, centimetres back to base, then leaving up the stairs, the lines still feeding out, unreeling years between us, anchor, kite. I space walk through the empty bedrooms, climb the ladder to the loft, to breaking point where something has to give. Two floors below your fingertips still pinch the last one hundredth of an inch. I reach towards a hatch that opens on an endless sky to fall or fly. First revelation is that this is a sonnet. It's called a curtail sonnet. It follows a shortened sonnet form with a loose ten beats per line and it has a total of 15 lines, not the 14 that we would expect from our usual Shakespearean or Petrarchan sonnets. The image that springs to mind when we think of a mother and their child is that of the umbilical cord. And yet there's a cut-off between mother and child that's mirrored by the rhymes and the connections that we get across this poem of the sounds. And it's as if the mother and child cannot be forced apart even if at times it's uncomfortable to read. Let's take, for example, the distance in the enjambement between lines one and two. They're connected, albeit distant. Even if we were to take the rhyme between lines one and two of span and hands, it doesn't really feel like a comfortable rhyme at all. In fact, it's a disconnect at the start. And that's reinforced by the opening word being very formal in the second person, or mother. Yet there's a more clear rhyme when we go towards lines three and four with doors and floors. It's as if this might not be a perfect rhyme, but then their relationship isn't perfect either. When we take the key image of second pair of hands, well, that's an image that we associate with someone being on hand to help. And in this case, it's the mother, but maybe one day they'll be replaced by a lover. And there's a nurturing image there of what being a second pair of hands is, and that's a maternal image. By line three, there's direct address, as if to sustain attention from their parent. You come to help me. And there's a list that follows from lines three to four of what can be seen in this house, whether it's windows, pelmets, doors, walls, priories of the floors. Is this to keep it objective and not get too emotional, not get bogged down in feelings? Because maybe it's too hard to say what this child feels he means to his mother. Regardless, the semantic field of measurement, whether it's single span or measure in this stanza, suggests that the mother holds on whilst the son unreels like a measuring tape new truths and considers how their relationship sizes up. The semantic field of measurement is expanded on in stanza two. Zero end metres, centimetres recording and reporting. There is absolute precision to everything that the speaker is sharing here. Do they want things to be better now that they're moving out of home? The metaphor of a tape measure expanded on um, with this really lengthy sen sentence that across stanza two takes up four lines definitely makes it seem as if there's an overflow of their measurement 
of more than just space, but the relationship. And the image that we get that flows between line seven to line eight, as enjambement is used, of unreeling years between us, the distance between son and mother seems to have grown over time. They're only close in this moment because they're standing near each other. And then we get the strangest, really simple, minor sentences of just one word. Anchor, full stop, kite. It highlights a real ambivalence and a mixed feeling of their relationship between mother and son. Because I associate an anchor with safety, something that's fixed during stormy weather. Yet a kite is anchored so it doesn't fly off. The person holding the kite has control. Freedom with a kite is an absolute illusion because it's controlled by the wind. This is a really strange mixed metaphor because if nothing else, kites don't have anchors. Ships have anchors. And the images aren't as close as we might suspect. And perhaps that's mirroring the fact that the mother and their son aren't as close as we might expect. There's an irregular rhyme scheme that's instant um, to us as uncomfortable. And it's mirroring that sense that we might presume that they're close, but they're not. So the rhyme that we get here of the present participles, recording, leaving, unreeling, it feels awkward, it feels clunky, maybe how their relationship feels to us too. By the end of this particular stanza, it feels uncomfortable with the double end stop, anchor, kite. It's as if the speaker is growing more distant until this really abrupt end. And it's weird the contrast that we get between this flowing enjambement between each line in the second stanza to quite an, a, a kind of brutal uh, range of full stops in quite quick succession. In this third section and stanza of this poem, there's partial rhyme on the ends of lines eight, nine and 10 with the I that's found in climb, something and give. It's not a full rhyme, it's distant. It's heightening how much distance there is between mother and son. It's as if the rhyme is disguised somehow in the word. Yet the rhyme at the end of line 12 with pinch and reach on line 13 suggests that the mother is keen to have a grasp on their son yet is struggling to do so. We also grapple with the sense of exploration and an adventure that's unlocked across this poem. From our speaker, they spacewalk, they climb the ladder to the loft. Is this nostalgic? Is this something this child did? Did they pretend they were spacewalking as a child? Is it a recollection of a childhood game they played together? Or is it really unlocking this sense of adventure that the child wants of independence without their parent around? This seems like a really sincere moment that has a joking reference to their mother, as if to comfort their mother somehow and to bring back what she is familiar with. Yet we also get between lines 12 and 13 through the your fingertips still pinch the last one hundredth of an inch. The signal that she doesn't want to let go. And the enjambement definitely helps illustrate the grip that she wants to keep on her child. There is an absolute climax in the rhyme scheme as found in lines 14 and 15 where the speaker games freedom with sky and fly as they rhyme. It hints that he will make it work if anyone. It's in his hands. And once more, the alliteration of fall and fly on that final hesitant 15th line heightens the reality of his future. It's in his hands. The joy of this particular sonnet is the way that Armitage plays with the sonnet form and shows the free spirit creeping of the speaker who is in a way a kite. He's experimentally taking new chances, yet it also pulls no punches. This is absolutely our speaker in a bid to show their independence. We also hear in this poem how much of a struggle it is to work out what's closeness and what's distance in a relationship between parent and child. Armitage succeeds in presenting a speaker's voice and also illustrating quite beautifully the struggle of a mother trying to work out how to let go.
Why not subscribe to Miss Hannah Loves Grammar for all things English, literary and grammatical?